It's got a flat tire. He didn't tell me that. I'm gonna return it. Piece of sh. Guy lied. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to an episode of Pat Taste of Foreman's. Today in the driveway is a channel first. Today in the driveway is something I said I would never do. Um, but today is also something that I'm going to practice what I preach. I tell you guys all the time that you do not know what you're capable of doing if you don't try. So here we are with a Snapper LT200. That has been sitting for quite some time. And you guys be the judge of how long it has been sitting. Quite frankly, I didn't ask because I didn't care. It was irrelevant. I wish I would have done some homework on this tractor before I bought it, but it is what it is. So this tractor just has a flat tire. No, <laughs> this tractor does not run, does not start, does not mow, does not go, because it does not start. Um, I literally know nothing about it except that it's red. Um, what I like about it was the price. The price is right. I did have to pay for this. That's just the way it is. Um, tell me how much you guys would pay for something like this. So this is weird to me. It's an 18 and a half horsepower with a 38 inch deck. That's small. I thought maybe you would see like a 15 or a 16. Again, I'm an idiot. I don't know much about lawn tractors. I only know from what I buy and resell and nothing else. What I liked about it is that it has pedal drive. So I thought that means it's like a modern tractor, but I could be wrong. When I see pedal drive, I think of like John Deere. I seen John Deere's with pedal drive. It's very rare that I see a Craftsman with pedal drive. So I feel like the pedal drive is for the higher end. It isn't our favorite color, resale red. So that's what it got here for. The 18 and a half inch horsepower Brazen Stratton engine just seems like a lot, a lot for a 38 inch deck. It has the gas tank in the rear well, they all have gas tanks in the rear, but this one is buried under the seat. So I think this is like 
extra large capacity. Now, what I love about this, you know, because I come from the automotive side, is like, look at this Ram Air induction hood that goes right in, right? And then on top of that, look at that. We have an intake on here that keeps everything nice and cool. Has an oil filter on there. I mean, you know, it's got wires hanging out. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know where to start. What I also loved about this is it got the big fat wide Larry Hoovers on the back compared to what I am used to. The seat is in really, really good shape except this little doohickey right here. Again, not a big deal because you know, the gas tank is underneath the seat. Um, the battery is not, it is underneath the hood. Why is this here? I don't know. So because there is no, there's a hydrostatic transmission, this is your deck height adjustment. This is your pedals forward and reverse. It's missing the grass flap chute. The deck is reinforced. That's what this baffle is. Um, that, that right there is a hundred bucks and it's not including the brackets. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. This is cruise control, which is obviously broken. Okay, so this has a key for starting, which obviously it's not starting. This is a key for mowing reverse, which is missing. And I guess these are just extra switches. What would go here? I'm not sure. I would assume, you know, an hour meter. Okay, there are, oh, that's for a bracket. Is it supposed to be another one here? You see how we have a bracket here? and nothing here, but then all the wiring is in the way. You know, I don't know. Uh, this thing does not start, does not run, has a flat tire. When I got there, the tires were inflated. What I think is pretty cool is how the deck is affixed. This is something I've never seen before with this big bracket out front and in the rear. This is also my first lawn tractor. Oh, look at this. Son of a... All right, so somebody is messing around. Look, that's loose. This is off. Oh God, has a fuel pump on it because the tank, because the, yeah, the tank is lower than the motor. So it is gravity feed. This is throttle, this is park lights. What would go here? I would assume an hour meter and maybe a volt gauge. I don't know. I have an idea for this, but First, we need to get this thing, you know, running before I start spending a glorious, an exuberant amount of money and time. The model number and serial number on this is 26904400, serial number 2045-1142. Now you guys would know, this is the original carb. So I wonder if this is a Nikki carb. I mean, listen, if, if this is like a Nikki carb, I am just going to install an updated world, world, borrow, what, whatever. Let's check the oil. Oil is clean and to the right level. What does it smell like? It smells like oil. Um, let's, it doesn't start, right? But let's just try anyway. The battery is dead, for sure, 110%. But I will just do this for the tube. Absolutely nothing. Uh, it does have a PTO clutch. This is something I have never dealt with before in my life. I kind of wish I knew it didn't have a PTO clutch because one, it's electrical, two, I'm old school. Just give me a lever with a cable and a pulley. And if it doesn't work, I know where to go. Um, this clutch, if it doesn't work, we got problems. We need to make adjustments. 
repairs or replace clutches are really, really expensive. So right now off the bat, let's just say we do get this thing mowing and going. We have to worry, no, we get this thing going. Then we have to worry about it getting mowing in the sense of the clutch. No. If we get this thing running, engine starts, going, driving on its own, then we need to get it mowing. And the mowing part consists of the clutch and also this really expensive deck spout. This, I'm almost positive, is made by Briggs and Stratton. I really don't see any similarities between this and the Craftsman Husqvarna's I have flipped. I do get pooling vibes only because of the rear tires. I've never seen fat tires on this except for a pooling or a different type of, of Husqvarna. So I'm a little, I'm a little bit out of my wheelhouse upon out of my wheelhouse upon out of my wheelhouse. But I'm pretty confident um, in you and me that we will get this thing going, I hope. If not, then we'll figure out why it doesn't run, why it was put up for sale, and if I got a good deal or not, and how are we going to salvage this? That is going to be uh, a priority of mine because I just can't have carcasses laying over here. So the missus will not have that. So this has to go either way. We prefer it goes under its own power, um, but we shall see. Because if we do lawn tractors, we have zero inventory of parts. Um, hopefully, I do not have to go out and buy another lawn tractor to make another one whole. Pray that we could use well, whatever we have here to get the bulk of the work done. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but if we do get this running, this side discharge shoe cover that that doesn't that's missing and that's very important to me you will never see me sell a lawn tractor without that there are idiots that do that's very dangerous um i'm thinking i can fit retrofit an mtd shoot on there i get those vibes that that will fit that's just my eagle eye and my amateur unprofessional not a lot of lawn tractor a lot of snowblowers, a lot of mowers, opinion. So, give me a few minutes. I am going to pump up the tire so this thing is easy to move. And try and get something going on the battery. Right? I think that's the first thing we did, right? We confirm that it has oil in it. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And we're gonna start with the battery and go from there. Alrighty, so I have the battery on a quick little charge before we actually hit it with some real juice. Now, you're asking me, did you do anything trying to like look at it? Did you recognize anything while you were looking at it? Obviously not, I have a bad habit. Look at that Franken tractor from last year. Believe it or not, guys, there is going to be a video about that. I owe that video to you guys. I will be dropping that. Um, underneath the carburetor is, is wet. How did I not see this loose and this hose? You know, I'm not making excuses. I completely dropped the ball on that. Um, what I thought was pretty cool, and I've never seen before, and I actually like it, believe it or not, is the valve stem for the tires are on the inside. Unless this wheel, unless these are put on backwards. That could be quite possible. I don't, I don't know. I have to do some research. So 
Yeah, you know what? They could be on backwards, because look at the rear. Audi. And the front is an any. Is there any? Right, there is a little bit of gas, but let's see if we could rejuvenate it with some fresh gas. Sounds pretty stupid, but sometimes it works with lawn mowers. I mean, snow blowers. You just give a little bit of, of the fresh stuff. It's about $100 worth of gas. Uh, all right, let's put, do we see some? All right, now we can see some on the gauge. I mean, this tank is freaking huge. This tank runs side to side and right inside here. So, let's switch this to jump start mode. All right, so it's saying ready. Seat on. Nothing. I don't hear the PTO popping. Oh, shh, what did I get myself into? Well, so I know I'm jumping around because I don't know what I'm doing. But the only thing I did is spin the motor. And you hear that? It means it has compression. So uh, this is a four pro post starter. Is this fuse good? It's a 20 amp fuse. It is good. I'm not sure if this fuse is supposed to be 20 amps. What these two wires do, I'm a little concerned about. But we shall see. We are going to try and start this. Ooh. I think it's supposed to spark. Alright, there's something. Nothing. Okay. Well, that's not good. I connected it and I could hear a buzzing sound. What does that mean? Don't ask me. Let me try jump the starter. All right, I could do Can I jump the starter using Yeah, I'm gonna keep my battery on there. This is the battery side. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. It's not going. Why is it not going? Does that mean the starter is no good? Right, if I, like technically this is power. All right, I heard it move, but why is it? Can I just turn this? I'll get it off compression. Ah. Uh, 
Isn't that... Shouldn't that be? Like, why is it... No, that's not safe. That is not safe. What about from the battery pack to the starter? I don't have a jump pack. That charger kind of is my jump pack because I don't kind of do mobile. All right, guys, so I'm a little lost. I admit electricity is not my strong point. So let me tell you what I do know, right? There are some safety switches engaged. I did bypass the seat switch because this here concerns me. I do know a seat switch has like a probe, so I wasn't sure if this was used on the seat switch. The seat switch to depress it and cheat the system, I don't know. But there is a key, and I think it's connected to a bunch of safety switches which is like grounds. Then it connects to the solenoid, starter solenoid. Then the starter solenoid feeds the starter. So I turn the key, I have nothing. I turn the key with power to the battery and there's still nothing. So then I, wait a minute, this cruise control is broken. Does that, how does cruise control, hold on, this is, if the cruise control is broken and they left it in the cruise control position, right, would that kill Whatever is going on here. How does cruise control work? It's like hooked up here. This rod here is hooked up. But. Uh, hold on. If the cruise control is stuck, down, okay, now let's put it in park. Or does this thing like really need to be depressed? <sighs> yeah, so, anyway, so I'm trying to like isolate the tractor in half. Key switch to solenoid and all that doohickeys and wires, right? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, correct me. And then the other half would be solenoid right to the starter. Everything, you know, seems to be hooked up. Do I need to pull, you know, the starter off and, and bench test it? You know, take the starter out, put power to it, and see if it spins that way and confirm that it, it works, and then if it does work, there could be something else telling the starter not to stop, and I could be very wrong. But, you know, all I see here is a power wire. And if I take the starter up top, I assume it's grounded to the block. Could it be a bad ground? Have you guys ever seen like a bad ground? You know, this thing's been sitting Right, there's no secret with that. And depending on how long it's sat, 
can rust build up against the starter, you know? And that's not a good ground. I know the solenoid is grounded to the frame and these look like a good solid connection. So obviously when I switch the two posts together, right, I'm jumping the solenoid. So the solenoid could be bad or the key switch could be bad. I still hear nothing. With the, with the deck, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to put this back in. And I don't know, do I think I need to start with a fresh battery or a good battery. I don't want to spend any money on this. I have the battery that's in here. I have another battery sitting on the side that's four years old. I don't know if it's good. And then I do want to recycle the battery out of the Arian snowblower that I have. Um, that's getting a little bit on in years. So I think from now on every year, I'm gonna take the battery from the Arians, put it in a lawn tractor, and then start a new battery fresh every year at the Arians because that is the original battery from two, three years. And I do have to jump it. All right guys, tell me what's next because I don't know what's next. I'm going to charge the battery, batteries off camera, and maybe when I'm done charging the three batteries, I could test them for you and show you how I test batteries and this really, really unique tool that uh, my parents actually gifted to me. So, yeah, yeah, not my, not my most proudest video, but I'm pretty confident between you guys and me, we can definitely figure something out. There's just gonna be a little bit of a, of a process. I think I might off camera yank the starter and bench test it and uh, go from there because right now I'm doing the Franken tractor upload and like I said, I owe that to you guys. Um, I know in between this video and a few others, I'm gonna be throwing out another lawn tractor videos that we left off from last year. So I wanna to apologize for some of you guys that really did help us out. Um, things just came up and you know, we just had to you know, jump ship, we're back on. So please, 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 I beg you, tell me what I'm doing wrong besides buying this and besides working on this. Tell me the diagnostic step process. Right? Because we talk about with the small stuff, facts, fuel, air, compression, timing, spark. So because I can't get this thing to turn, I really can't verify anything, but this thing definitely has compression. I don't want to touch this because we have power. Um, and what are those two wires that are hanging out of nowhere? The Walmart battery says L6, it's a group U1. Yeah, let me, let me go. Let me, let me think about this. Um, and you guys will think about this. All right guys, tell me, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me where I need to leave off on this. Do I bench test the starter? and then put it back on if it checks out. And then maybe it could be a weak starter. You know, I'm thinking it needs to be grounded to the block, right? That could be the only way. There's no other wire going to it. What are these two extra speed connectors? Where do they go? Um, yeah, yeah. Help a brother out, please. And don't tell the missus. All right, guys, if you guys found this video good, bad, ugly, entertaining, you want to help me out, you can start with this right here. 
Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Later. I want to show you guys something. And I don't mean to whatever, but you know, I suck at electrical and I like to, I guess, panic a little bit when it comes to electrical stuff. So, remember we talked about the solenoid and wires, right? This solenoid has a black and a yellow wire. So I'm like, where do these things go? Because I'm almost positive that these are like grounds, correct me if I'm wrong, either positive, 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 negative, because yellow and black, black is always gonna be ground. I'm thinking, I'm like, let me check to see where this stuff is grounded. This thing has been sitting outside. So when I was looking and I followed the black wire, look what happened. This eyelid. Now, see how rust, not, you know, see this is not shiny. So I don't know where this goes. This is a ground. But this almost looks like an eyelid for a battery or if it goes somewhere on the frame, remember this bracket is missing on this side, I think. I don't know. So let me hook this up to a ground that I know is a ground. Batter. And then we're gonna try and start this. I'm having my jump starter boot up. We have a minute and 38 seconds left to record. And seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one, ready. So maybe not. All right, so we probably do have other issues. I got really, really, really excited. All right, let me know where that goes. I'm thinking the battery and, oh, God damn it, I thought we had something. Damn.